Morning, guys. You know what it's like to go out and do major fucking exercise without stretching? It hurts. Yeah, it's still morning. The sun's not up yet, but it's coming. What am I doing? Checking on these girls. You see that one right there? That black bitch. So some of you guys that were with us last year will recall we had a real psycho fucking cow. We had one calf yesterday. So you see the fucking goofy bitch? That thing right there. Licking herself. She hasn't calved yet, but she's real goddamn close. She just chased me out of the goddamn corral. From halfway. So. This corral is one, two, nine windbreaks. Okay. So it's well over 100 feet. Fuck it. Well, 300. It's just, basically, it's 300 feet long. I'm halfway across it. I'm right about here. She was standing over there. I made it to over here. And she just gave out a hell of a baller. And just fucking came at me. And I was shaking the whip and the whole bloody nine yards. The dog was gone. Slappy wasn't doing nothing for me. And yeah. But she's definitely going to calve here shortly. And she won't let me in the fucking corral to check on the rest of the cows. That goddamn fucking thing. Anybody wanting a fucking cow? Come on over. I got a real nice one for you. You'll love her. She'll love you back. She'll blow kisses at you. <laughs> and I'm not home today, so I don't know how the hell this is going to pan out for us. Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. I got to get around and check on these girls, so we'll talk to y'all later. I really hope she doesn't have any issues, because if she does... That's uh, consider it fucking hamburger because there's nothing I can do with her. Not when she's on the fight like this for whatever reason. That's her right there. She's definitely going to calve. But she is on the fucking fight. She broke water. So it's only going to be a little, little bit here and... Nine times out of ten, cows like this, and they're mean, you never have to touch them. You never fucking have to worry about them. Like for calving. But there's always that 1% chance, right? Of ten, or one time out of ten. But we're going to have to get her out of this fucking pen, because she's going to cause havoc for the rest of the fucking calving season, and we just started. She is definitely not a happy camper. Uh, so, anyway, last year, if you guys remember, we had that psycho bitch. Oh, well, this is her half sister. So, I'm wondering if that fucking trait isn't coming off of that friggin' Angus bull of ours. They're beautiful, fucking tame, calm, quiet as heifers. Like growing up, like what we got in the crowd here right now, but holy jumping Jiminy's. This ain't good. We'll just leave her alone for a little while and see what happens. Talk to you guys later. Alrighty, guys. Well, we're only 15 minutes late after fucking running from a cow, and now what a nice guy. Got a psycho bitch fucking cow, and I left home and left CP to look after the psycho bitch cow. Yeah, no. I uh, told CP, just leave the friggin' animals locked up. Don't even bother going in the pen. Leave her alone. If she kicks the bucket trying to calve, she kicks the bucket trying to calve. If the calf dies, the calf dies. That bitch is fucking leaving the yard. Simple as that. One way or another. Whether it be on somebody's trailer, my trailer, or brown paper, 
that's how she's going to be going. Anyways, what are we doing? Well, we're at JR's Welding here in Regina. We're hauling for FWS, Industrial Projects, Canada Division. And that green stuff, there's a that pallet of a bundle of framework, and then another one the same size, and then behind all that one by one square tubing and shit that's bundled up. That's what we're grabbing, so. Yeah. And lo and behold, my forklift operator who went to get the paperwork and everything for me is also one of my subscribers, him and his dad. Sweet! So, with that, I'm gonna let you guys go and uh, we'll bring you back a little bit later when we hit the highway or once we're strapped down. Talk to you guys then. Alrighty, there we go. She's all strapped down. This bundle kind of slid a little bit in the middle, but I think we'll be okay with it. I hope. If not, then we're going to have to belly wrap that son of a bitch. Here's a pail of paint stuck inside those frames. You can kind of sort of see it through there. Right there. But it's a five gallon pail, and even if it was to tip over, it wouldn't come out of there. No, unless I put the trailer upside down in the ditch somewhere. But uh, that ain't gonna happen today. Uh, so I make it sound like it's happened before. At this point, it hasn't happened at all. But we are loaded down, strapped down, bounded down. Better yet, we're loaded up. <laughs> and we're bounded down. And now we'll be trucking. So I'll let you guys go. I'm gonna get the hell out of the city and we'll bring you back later. Alrighty guys, how the hell y'all doing now? So yeah, we're on the road, we fueled up, filled the truck up, so 41.70 gallons, Canadian gallons, okay? Now I know the Canadian gallon is a little bigger than uh, American gallon, but whatever. Or, it works out to like 188 liters. Take a wild guess what that costs the guy. At two bucks a liter. This is clear diesel. 376 bucks. Nice, right? I didn't even do the math. I didn't even break it down like to how much per gallon that is. I know it's like pushing right around that $9 a fucking gallon freaking crazy how the hell is a guy supposed to make a living like that anyway we're on the road today i know i said i was gonna freaking pull the plates and i'm still seriously contemplating it um i figured i'd hold off until the end of the month we got this one haul i don't know what's gonna happen in the future if fws decides to uh to uh, give us more work, then maybe we'll hang, hang tight. Because I told them the dollars per mile or dollars per kilometer loaded, uh, our rates are subject to change on a daily basis. So, and they're fine with that. So, anyway, that's where we're at right now. So, Okay, also another uh, shout out to Grizz, Grizz and uh, Colby, his son Colby. Colby loaded me today at JR's Welding. Um, and uh, when he's at home with dad, he uh, they sit down, they watch your videos. So thank you guys, appreciate it. Anyways, gonna let you all go. We'll talk to you all later. Yep, still on the road, guys. <clears throat> it's like a three-hour drive from Regina to Malford. Mm, so, but they definitely have more snow than we do. Not a hell of a lot more, but they definitely have more. They got a lot more bush than we do. And up here, it's a lot of, we're rolling into a lot of birch and spruce. 
there is still poplar too but getting into a lot more natural forest type and it's uh, spruce and birch <coughs> I should should have brought the chainsaw and stop cut a few trees down take them home for firewood yeah getting there with a freaking truck would be impossible not get driving into the fields out here that's for sure I also noticed up here a lot of areas they uh, along the highway they plowed they did snow ridging along the highway to slow the snow down from blowing over the roads so that's a pretty smart idea there's a hell of a lot more places that should do that anyway we've got about a half hour driving here before we get to our destination so uh, when we get to destination I'll bring you guys back we'll talk to you then well I'll tell you guys there ain't much at this site at this point and this is gonna be one mucky place here in a little while guaranteed freaking deed the ditch that they got cut right there yep so we got to get to muster point find out where they want to unload this stuff off the truck and uh, won't take long to unload just get freaking unloaded and get the hell out of here right and so with the dirt and snow piled up the way it is everywhere yeah this is gonna be this is going to be a muck hole of a sight for a while. Anywho. Okay. I'm going to let you guys go. We'll yammer at y'all later. Alrighty. There. We're unloaded. Um, I don't try. To, when I go to these places like this, I don't. I try not to video the actual unload. I'll video the site itself, but not the actual unload, because some guys just don't want to be on video. And I don't got time to uh, ask each and every freaking person if they want, if they're okay with being videoed or not. So we just don't do it, right? The site I can video, do a quick video of the site, but that's about it, right? So. Anyways, we're unloaded 290k one way direct. So that's like what 170 miles, 180, 85 miles, something like that. I don't know, somewhere around there. Anyway, let's get the hell home and check on CP and our wild freaking cows. So we'll talk to you guys later. Alrighty guys, just to recap on this morning with that friggin' bitch cow. Uh, she calved literally like within 10 to 15 minutes after I left the yard. And CP opened the gate and all the cows ran out. She stayed in the corral with her calf. And I just talked to CP now. It's uh, 20 after 1. And she's walking around the outside edge of the corral and she got close enough to the calf that she could tell it's a heifer. How about that? She had heifers two rows, two years in a row. Anyways, don't really freaking matter. That heifer is getting double tagged for sale. She will go to market and this freaking cow is definitely leaving the yard in one shape or form or another mm, so anyway we got about a three and a half hour drive to get home we should be there about 4 30 ish unless i end up stopping in regina to grab this or that whatever so i'll let you guys go we'll yammer at y'all later look at that melting here like crazy the 
they definitely never had as much snow as we did. But, yeah, she's melting. Guys will be in the field in two weeks. LOL. I noticed on the way up that, uh, like, this is a stubble field right here. And that stubble's real short. And, uh, you can got darn near see the ground through that snow. In spots. Yep, she won't be long. There won't be much snow left except for the low spots and the trees. Spring is in the air, boys. Spring is in the air. Later. Alrighty, guys. Well, we made her home. You see this one right here? Right friggin' here? That heifer? She's definitely not staying. Uh... Yeah, she's definitely not staying. Uh, her mother is the one that put me on the run this morning. That black bitch. And her mother did not leave the corral at all today. Apparently, according to CP. So she's definitely leaving. That daughter is leaving because we don't need more of that bloodline, right? Okay, that's closed. Now, at this rate, you know, if we can get a 60K, who would have thought I'd say this? If we could get a 60 kilometer an hour wind, that would help dry the friggin' friggin' yard up here, right? But I think it's both, there's a risk of rain and snow for this weekend. Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. We'll bring you back when we go out and check on the other cows. We'll talk to you then. No, there she is. The bitch. So she was where this red cow is right here. And I walked through. I came around this panel right here. I walked within 10 feet of her. And I got about 20 feet to the other side walking along the straw line there. And I just heard her ball and oh my god, here she come a running. And I beelined it. I was going to go with the feeder, but then I had to go back towards her. So I went straight across and over the fucking crowd panels over there. And she was blowing snot down my back. Let's, let's uh, bring the girls in. I don't want her heading out. And she never left the crowd all day. So we're going to go get a tractor and a bucket load of cut feed. And we're going to coax all these girls in and lock them in for the night. Yep, yep, yep. That's what we're going to do. You want to try shoeing her this way? With a panel? A panel for protection? What panel? This one. Well, or... on the tractor, you mean? Yeah. Well, we... Or even the bale feeder? You know, to push her this way, we'll get her in the crawl? We can try, but I don't know if it's going to work too well. Because you got to get the calf to come. If you can't get the calf to come, she's just going to go on the fight hardcore. I think the calf will follow her. Mm, so. Panel would be better though. I can't put the panel right close to the ground. The feet will hook in the dirt and. Yeah. I think let's just give her a day, another, till tomorrow. Before we fight with her. Plus it'll give my groin that much time to recover. <laughs> I'm still pretty sore. <laughs> Are you recording? Yeah. <laughs> you on your fucking phone. <laughs> yeah, but people like this kind of stuff. They would have loved 
you have any idea how much they would have loved to see that cow with me running okay, and videoing? Okay, and get in there. Give me no, a slappy. No, 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 no. Not doing that. <laughs> I'm too sore right now. It ain't going to happen. Yeah, but when you're scared, you can run real fast. Uh, I can run pretty fast for a fat man when you're scared. Anyway, I'll let you guys go. We'll talk to you later. There. That little sucker's tagged up. Needled up. Mom walked out of the corral and we waited, crossing our fingers she would, and we closed the gate, and we got one red girl that has got a bad eye, and the one that caught her foot in the panel, both locked in here, so we're going to try getting them in the chute today, and uh, we'll uh, treat them up, uh, so... Anywho, the nice part is when they walk out and the calves stay behind, you close the gate and then you're not going to, ha don't have to worry so much about getting killed. And nobody calved here this morning, so. Alrighty, I'll let you guys go. We'll talk to you all later. By the way, good morning everyone. Red eye. Okay, this one had... She's got a little cut right on her eyeball. Sorry I didn't bring you guys along for the, that to show you that, but she also had some feed stuck in her eye. So we flushed her eye really good. Uh, we used Depacillin. Basically it's penicillin long acting and I put it right in her eye. And then we make this patch, just a piece of cloth and use the glue and glue it on her face so that it keeps the garbage out of her. Uh, she'll stay in the cat, what we call our calving crawl slash sick pen for the next few days. Just to keep an eye on her and make sure she's gonna be okay. So I gotta get the halter off her head and then I'll turn her loose. And then we'll doctor on the foot of that other one. I'll bring you guys back when we go to do that. Alrighty guys, so with this one, she's the one with the bad foot right here. And she kinda injured her foot with that steel, on that steel. And yeah, she's sore. No, I'm gonna get it all, try and clean it up as much as I can here and see what's going on without her fucking taking my fucking arm off if she starts thrashing around. If she does, then we'll friggin' have to tie her foot. And you can see how she kind of cut it around the top edge right there and then down the side there. And that's what I'm concerned with. Have we got a different brush here? Like, I think she'll be fine, but she's definitely fucking sore, favoring this foot big time. So I'm going to work at cleaning her up, and I'll bring you guys back in a little bit. There. She's definitely sore on that foot, but... I did the best I can for her at this point, so. And the red one with patch is over by the round bale feeder. So, and this red one 
Her baby's just around the corner. It's all tagged up and needled up. <sighs> Fucking melting like crazy. It's, uh... Oh yeah, the water's nice and warm. Is warm water. You can almost have fucking have a bath in this shit. <sighs> I don't know why it's so fucking That'll cool it off. Oh, yeah. But they'll be better off in here, off that round bale, than outside with uh, all the other cows fighting with them for feed and stuff. And so, and we can keep a closer eye on them this way, too. Anywho. Did you get that shit out of your hair, babe? No, I need a shower. <laughs> uh, she got shit on. You're not supposed to put your head under the cow's ass. You got a plan. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. We'll let you go. We'll talk later. Alrighty, guys. So, just got home. Shipped three jackets off. Holy crap, let me tell you. Shipping these freaking jackets. Good thing I said that uh, it's cost of the jacket is $75. I've said this before, plus shipping. So I think what we're gonna do for anybody that wants a jacket, we'll ship the jacket, but the shipping costs will be COD. So you guys would end up having to pay the shipping costs um, when you receive the jacket. Uh, Ed, your coat just got mailed out to you today. And my goodness. Like, yeah, because he won the jacket, I'm I'm covering the cost of all the shipping also. But anyways. Uh, we're digging out some straw bales here. We just came home. I got the manure spreader unhooked from Big Blue. And... I happened to look out in the pasture and there's a water bag hanging out of a cow's backside. She's in the middle of calving right now. And now I'm looking out there through the wind breaks. I'm not going to bother turning you guys around right this second because you wouldn't be able to see her through the wind breaks with the cam anyways. But anyway, I'm not sure if she just dropped the calf already or not. It's possible. But we'll find out here right away. I'll bring you guys along uh, when we get out there. CP's going to do some bed bedding. And uh, I'm going to go investigate how that cow is doing while CP is bedding, bedding them down in the, in the corral. And we have a supper date that we got to get to at 5.30 here yet tonight. And it's already friggin' like 10 after 3. Oh, fun, fun. Let's get her done. We'll cut you guys here in a little bit. Talk to ya. Alrighty, there she is. Water bag broke. It's hanging out her backside. What's she gonna be like? I don't know. Is she gonna be psycho bitch? That is a, this is her second calf. Last year she was a heifer. So anybody that doesn't know, that's the water bag there. Hanging out her back end. And yeah, baby's gonna be along here shortly. Mm, so, and 99% of the time when you got range cattle like this, when they go to calve, unless they're locked in a corral, they'll go off by themselves to calve somewhere. 
That's just what they do. They don't want to be bothered by a bunch of cows rummaging around them when they calve. <laughs> when she calved last year, I'm trying to remember, but I'm thinking she was actually like, uh, I'm thinking she was the last one to calve of the heifers. And she was the first one to get bred. The day we turned the bull out was the day she got bred. And she is calving bang on to the day. Right? Is today the 20th? I think today's like the 19th or the 20th. So she's pretty she's a hundred percent right on. The bull caught her and she stuck the whole time that first trip. So I'm just gonna walk her in, see if she'll walk into the corral. Because she is a heifer and if there's problems, I wanna be able to get her into the barn if I need to, right? So I'm gonna let you guys go and I'll walk her in and we'll talk to y'all later. Well, that's her guys. We got her in the barn just in case because this is her second baby. Uh, so just in case there's a problem i don't think there's going to be any problems but for now we're just going to leave her alone water is broke uh we'll give her a couple hours and see what she's going to be like and if there's still nothing in a couple hours then we'll go for a feel and find out if we've got a backwards or upside down or head back or leg down or whatever Anyway, give us the old thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Fun, fun, fun. Let's get her done. We'll catch y'all later.